Eli Drake is going to be a big part of Impact Wrestling's huge homecoming pay-per-view on Sunday, January 6th. They're returning home, homecoming at the asylum in Nashville where it all started back in 2002. He's got a Monsters Ball match, this time I said it right, against the Monster Abyss. And that is just going to be crazy, chaotic, just unbelievable. So many good matches are going to be part of this and all. Eli, how did you get your start in pro wrestling? Was this something you were a fan and then you wanted, hey, this is something I want to do, or did you fall into it later on? How did that work out for you? No, look, I, I, since before I can remember, I was a wrestling diehard. Here's the crazy thing. I, I, everything that I think of in my life, I think of in terms of wrestling for some reason. I can remember being uh, in a history class and hearing the description of the end of World War II uh, and, and just thinking of like, thinking of it in terms of like, <laughs> I remember thinking of like uh, the U.S. and Britain as like, or no, I'm sorry, U.S. and Russia as like stone cold in the rock. Um, because here were these guys just kicking ass on everybody and then all of a sudden it's kind of like they backed into each other and now they faced off for the next 40 years in the Cold War. Um, so <laughs> I just started thinking of everything almost in those terms. Um, and yeah, man, I was a big time Hulkamaniac when I was a kid. Uh, big time uh, followed the NWO after that. Big fan of Austin, The Rock. I wanted to be those guys when I was younger. Um, and so after college ended early for me, I moved on to Cincinnati, Ohio, where I started Heartland Wrestling Association. Uh, same place that Sandy Callahan and uh, Dean Ambrose started, um, to name a few. So, uh, yeah, so that was 2003. Yeah, this is the year after Impact Wrestling started. You're getting your start in the business. For someone like you, or anybody for that matter, how do you start to look to become a pro wrestler? How does that whole process start? Is there someone you know? Do you go online? What is the process? What was the process for you? Well, see, back then, I, I, I think I was on AOL and just kind of search around for stuff. Uh, so you're talking about uh, 2000, 2001, I really started looking. I remember one of the things I wanted to do was get a wrestling ring and just put it in my backyard. Really glad I didn't do that because that would have been stupid and I had no idea what I was doing. Um, but I uh, did start trying to search online. The only thing I could find was OVW. Um, I think at one point I even called up WWE Talent Relations. I think it might have been Jim Ross that picked up. I'm not sure. It was either him or it was uh, Bruce Pritchard maybe, but they told me that like, they couldn't endorse any particular school, but just said that they had uh, OVW um, as their developmental. So I decided at that moment I was going to go to OVW. That was just all I could do. Because if they trusted their guys to go there, that's where I was going to go. So I went to check that out. Didn't really feel it. And a friend turned me on to HWA. And HWA happened to also have a contract at the time, but I didn't know that. Um, so I went and checked that out. I liked the feel of that place a lot more, and I ended up going there. Well, I think that's pretty cool, too, because you mentioned Jim Ross, Bruce Pritchard, that they just picked up the phone, or did you have a contact that you were able to get at least to talk to them? No, I literally found the number for, like, the, the WWE headquarters, and when it, there's a voice prompt, and I just, I, I literally asked for talent relations. I don't even know how I knew that word at 18 years old, um, or 19, or whatever it was, but that, that's what I, I asked for talent relations, and somebody picked up, but I, I really cannot recall which one of those two that it was, but I think it was one of those two. Yeah, that's really cool in itself, because you'd never expect... Something like then you didn't know, but I would think about it now, and I'm like, geez, I, I can't believe I just called called the number, and all of a sudden one of the two big guys pick up the phone. That's really cool. Yeah, and and, and I mean, it sucked that I kind of couldn't really point me in a direction because at the time I, I was reading online that there were a lot of places that had uh, garbage training, and they would they would train you really terribly and then basically just send you out to go do shows and I saw a lot of that as I started to get into the business um, and so I'm really thankful for the training that I got because I feel like it was very micromanaged to small details because really honestly some of the small details are some of the biggest things that people don't even notice you mentioned small details and you are a master wrestler in that ring. So many fans, so many people behind the scenes give you major props. So you have to go back to your training and your learning and you're watching films and studying. Were there a few people that at that early stage that you credit and say, hey, this person helped me a lot, that person helped me a lot? Um, well, I, I tell you this. Um, I'll say that uh, Cody Hawk was my 
uh, he was my trainer there. Les, Les Thatcher had a little bit of a hand in it, but he had mostly stepped back at that point. Um, so Cody and I, sometimes we didn't always see eye to eye, but I will say he was an amazing trainer. Um, but one of the best things I did was move away from the Ohio area, uh, moved to Southern California and started wrestling for Championship Wrestling Hollywood, uh, where Dave Marquez uh, really kind of believed in me a lot and really started to kind of uh, push me in a different direction. I ended up putting me together with Percy Pringle, a.k.a. Paul Bearer. Um, so that was a really uh, amazing kind of instrumental part in my career because that was when I really started to feel like my creativity was able to, to flourish. I felt a little bit more stifled while I was in Ohio, whereas once I got to L.A. and started working like the South, I'm sorry, the Southwest and like, you know, I'd work Phoenix, Vegas, um, L.A. And, and all those areas around there, I started to just feel like I was starting to feel more open creatively. Do you think, too, that was the turning point for you where you knew you could do this and do it well and have others notice you? I, you know, I, I think I always kind of felt that way in a certain sense. Like, I, I felt like I always had something to offer, but I never really felt like it was really shining and showing until, yeah, probably the, the Hollywood shows that I started doing. Um, once we started doing championship wrestling in Hollywood, I'd start to be able to see that uh, on TV and see it coming to life and just seeing... Uh, kind of in a lot of ways, whatever locker rooms I'd go in, I started to feel like I was head and shoulders above what was around me. And I, I don't mean to say that in a braggadocious way, but just in the sense of really taking a, a survey of the room and looking around me and just being like, okay, I've got something to offer. I can talk, I've got a certain look, and I can work. Uh, so there's no way this isn't happening, is basically what was in my head. Hey, it's cocky when you really can't back it up, but it's confidence when you can back it up. You've been proven to back it up, and you're doing amazing things in Impact Wrestling. When you were young, did you play a lot of sports growing up? Yeah, man, I was, uh, you know, the unfortunate thing is I didn't really have, like, the super ultra-competitive spirit in me back then until I was probably, like, 18 or 19. Um, unfortunately, I, I, was, I was the youngest of three sons, but I was distantly younger than the other two. The other two were eight and nine years older than me, so they got to compete with each other on a very regular basis. I grew up in a cul-de-sac that was mostly girls that were my age, so i go out and shoot basketball all day long. I'd play basketball, I'd play baseball. Uh, played football, um, but with like baseball, I, I was decent. I wasn't great. Um, basketball, again, I was decent, but I thought I was a lot better than I was. Basketball was the dream when I was in middle school. I was like, I'm going to go go to the NBA. I'm going to be the next Michael Jordan. Uh, but then I didn't grow past six one, and I wasn't as good as I thought I was. So, uh, uh, you know, so yeah, I played a lot of sports growing up. Actually, even ran cross country my senior year in high school. you mentioned the basketball so were you a basketball fan then and are you still a basketball fan huge basketball fan uh actually here's the, the crazy thing is that there's a bunch of uh, socal wrestlers that i used to work with out here um who on new year's day they always put together um a little pickup basketball game so we just played the other day for like three or four hours uh that we were all spent um so that's always fun i i, I do kind of i'll get with a friend of mine that i know from back home who lives out here now and uh If you pick up a Shaq shoe, it's like a boat. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the truth. Actually, you know what? Even if you look at my wrestling boots right now, um, I was wearing the Jordan 11s with a, a cover, but I just got new boots made, and my boots are, are uh, uh, modeled after the Air Jordan 11s, if you're familiar with what that is. That's nice. Those are sweet. That's cool as anything. Hey, for you, then, are you a Lakers guy, or are you a Clippers guy, or, or neither?
Yeah, hey, Kobe's last game was incredible. I remember late night, I think it was against Utah, and in the fourth quarter, he just went nuts. It was like watching the old Kobe. They were down by like 15, 17 points, came back, won the game, winning shot. It was just, yeah, that guy, just, just incredible. But that area for basketball, professionally, and even college, has always been great out there in the L.A. area and all. So you're in good basketball neck of the woods there. Yeah, I was here actually when uh, the last time the Lakers won the championship in 2010, and it was just insanity in the streets. Um, I remember at the time I was still working a restaurant job, and I'm trying to get home. That place is packed. I'm trying to get home up in Hollywood, and the streets were just, I mean, there were people in the streets. Uh, the cars would stand still. People were getting out of the cars. It was, it was 